Welcome to this video. We want to talk about the United States, the United Kingdom and France in this video. Thanksgiving coming up, and maybe even Thanksgiving today by the time you're watching this video. I'm actually recording it the day before. Christmas coming up, um, and we're going to be looking at the way culture, that these cultural events are, are affecting things, and, and it's really massively significant. Now, way back at the start of this video, we noticed that people in Iran were kissing the feet of religious statues in enclosed shrine areas, and we pointed that out as a cause of, of infection spread, which of course it is. Now, culture is one of those strange things. You see, I don't have a culture. Everything I do is perfectly normal. Um, um, people from overseas, they have a culture, and that can cause them to behave in ways which are a bit strange and idiosyncratic, really. But of course... Obviously, I do have a culture, just that you don't notice your own culture. You think your own cultural behaviour is normal. Well, in actual fact, it can be quite abnormal. And everything we do is, is, is entrenched in the culture that we're in. It's a bit like the nose on your face. You don't, you don't see it. Um, it's, it's just there all the time. It's, it's affecting you all the time, but you just don't see it because it's your own. So it's a bit like that. Um, quite, quite interesting, really. I'm not much of a, a sociologist, but... Um, this is kind of where it intersects with sociology. Now, just to show where we're at, because the situation really is quite serious, and I'm just going to show you a graphic that illustrates that. I mean, this is this is the daily confirmed COVID cases per million. Uh, the UK have been uh, well semi lockdown. It's called a lockdown. It's kind of it's, it's kind of a half lockdown really for the past um, few weeks, and of course it is reflected in the cases. But the United States has just continues inexorable increase in the United States. Now, the vaccines are not going to be making a big difference till about March, April time, April probably. Then they're going to start making a huge difference. Until then, we are on our own. We have these old fashioned methods, hands, face, space, ventilate, vitamin D type methods. Um, because the vaccines are going to come to the rescue, but not yet. So, you know, just, just let that graphic soak in a bit. This is the reality of the situation. And this is going to keep on going up unless measures are taken to bring it down. On its own, it will just keep going up, unfortunately. So I was, I was talking to David Davis from Australia, um, as opposed to David Davis, the UK politician, um, yesterday. And, and he was saying, you know, looking at, it, at this as an objective outsider, he's really quite concerned about the Northern Hemisphere this winter, as, as am I, because we've had all this good news about the vaccines, and that's right to celebrate that, but they're not there yet. We have to carry on with the existing methods. We've got this winter to get through. This is the whole this is the critical thing at the moment. This is the key message. You know this, but it's just a case of constantly kind of making this real. Now, getting on to the, 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 uh, the details, the, the deaths in the United States are going up. Uh, this was the highest daily total yesterday, over 2,000 deaths, the highest since the 6th of May. So well and truly in another wave. And there was also record numbers of fatalities in these following states. Maine, Alaska, Missouri, North Dakota, Indiana. In North Dakota especially. North Dakota is paying the price for the denial, the science denial that's been going on there for some time. The, the, uh, the re, uh, refusal uh, for many people to wear masks, the uh, apparent lack of uh, political leadership in mask wearing. If you live there, you know much more about it than I do. But, you know, we have this saying in English, I guess it's the same in the States, your chickens come home to roost. And, um, you know, you, you cannot deny things. You cannot deny the nature of reality. And it's coming back to comes back to bite you in the ankle. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm sorry it is, but it's, um, you know, it's, we have been talking about this since uh, February on this channel. Indiana, Wisconsin, Washington, Ohio, Oregon. Now... Of course, the biggie in the United States is, is the Thanksgiving thing. Now, again, if you're British watching this, you don't really understand unless you've been to the States. Um, I, I only really know from talking to people in the States how big uh, a cultural event uh, Thanksgiving is. Uh, and it's a huge cultural event. People go home. You know, it reminds me really of Spring Festival. The, you remember the, uh, the New Year in Wuhan, which was back on the I think it was about 25th of January? But people from Wuhan were coming and going all over the place because everyone goes home for Spring Festival. 
in China. And of course, this spread the pandemic all over China. And the situation in the States is, seems to be very similar. Everyone wants to go home for Thanksgiving. You know, it's, it's perfectly understandable, but um, <clears throat> it's not it's not good. Let's see what Dr. Fauci says about it. Um, we've had a great Thanksgiving last year and we're looking forward to a great Thanksgiving next year. But today we're going to call a timeout. We need, unfortunately, a year off from normal cultural celebrations. Now, um, the point is, the point I'm concerned is, there's no question really there's going to be a um, a Thanksgiving bounce, um, a Thanksgiving resurgence. Let me tell you why I'm thinking this at the moment. Um, So this is a a Marinst poll in the States. Check it out for yourself. Uh, 58% plan on celebrating Thanksgiving with fewer people, good to see. 36% plan the same number as last year. So 36% of people polled throughout the United States are going to celebrate Thanksgiving basically the same as they did last year or the same number of people. Now, I hope they'll all make sure their vitamin D status is good. I hope there'll be increased ventilation. I hope there'll be reduced sharing of utensils so that we don't get the disease spreading through fomites or bottles of wine or whatever it is passing from person to person. I hope there'll be good hand hygiene. Um, I I hope there'll be uh, appropriate mask wearing, certainly ventilation, but uh, I'm not overly convinced and basically 36% people are having the same numbers as last year. Um, Thankfully, only 4% are saying they plan on celebrating Thanksgiving with more people than they did last year. But make no mistake, if 36% of people carry on as if this is a normal year, um, we have a guaranteed surge in coronavirus cases as a direct result of Thanksgiving. No question about that. 36% of America is is a lot of people. It's Is, is it getting on for 100 million people? Uh, plan on carrying on as last year. Uh, not good. Right, who will be having smaller gatherings? Now, this isn't a political podcast, but... Uh, Democrats, it was 74%. Republicans, it was 39%. Um, So difference in in, in political leanings there as to whether people intend having a smaller uh, Thanksgiving gathering than last year. Geographically, Midwest, Northwest, West, South, not a huge difference in those numbers. Um, But if you did stats on on these numbers, that would be statistically significant. And um, this is an aspect of American culture that people in England really don't understand because as we've said before um, neo-fascists neo-marxists and members of the liberal democratic party all basically believe in the same um, approach to to this pandemic Um, one of the few nice things it's been good to watch in this pandemic is the cross-party unity in my country between the uh, conservative government and the uh, the Labour opposition, the Labour opposition voting with the Conservative government, virtually, I think I'm pretty well everything to do with infection control. So so that's kind of been good. So the fact that this, this political divide is there is, is somewhat bemusing to people who are not from the States. Um, it's, it's a bit like the nose on the end of your face, you don't see it. It's an aspect of culture, isn't it, I think. Um, but this is an aspect of culture which is going to... Um, result in um, increasing cases unquestionably and I haven't shown the deaths there but we know that the hospitalizations and deaths follow on from the cases unfortunately they are inevitable consequences now the same poll just out of interest in the states uh, people personally affected by the pandemic uh, 71% in the United States at the moment now um, travel uh, travel during uh, the Thanksgiving period. Um, what are Americans planning to do as regards travel? Um, is is the travelling down for Thanksgiving? Um, well, the American Automobile Association uh, estimates that there's going to be a 10% reduction in travel. This means 90% of people are planning to travel basically um, as normal during during Thanksgiving. 
different parts of the country, public transport, private transport. And because this is com this means that people from high area, high incidence areas, high prevalence areas, go into low prevalence areas, there is guaranteed, guaranteed spread as a result of this. So, and this is the time of year when we can least afford this because we're coming up to December, January when things are going to be worse. The vaccine's not going to kick in significantly till March, April, May. This means there's going to be a significant surge. So I'm happy to go on record for that. I believe there will be a significant surge after Thanksgiving in the United States that will result in more hospitalizations, that will result in more deaths. Um, if, if I'm wrong, I'll be back and um, uh, celebrating the fact that I'm wrong. Um, but um, I don't think I will be. Now, getting on to better news. Um, 6.4 million doses of vaccine are ready to ship in 24 hours from repositories uh, in the States. So these are ready-made, sitting there in the warehouse or in the freezer, deep freezer, waiting for the go-ahead from the FDA. Then they'll be out the door within 24 hours. So it started, it started. But of course, 6.4 million vaccines, only enough for 3.2 million people, less than less than, oh, I can't work it out, but a very small percentage of the total population of the United States. Um, now, it's going to be given out on state allocation based on population size in the state. And uh, 20 million people should be vaccinated, 40 millions of doses of vaccine. So 20 million people should be vaccinated, I'm hoping in December. It's going to start to make a difference, though, not till February, March, in, in real terms. The Pfizer vaccine, because it's got to be kept so ridiculously cold or minus 70 degrees centigrade whatever that is fahrenheit 90 minus 90 or something so that probably go to larger centers first because of the uh, the freezer facilities that are available the moderna can be transported in normal freezers uh, of course other vaccines we hope coming online very soon the oxford vaccine of course can be trans transported and, and kept for months at normal refrigerator temperatures now, um, priorities for vaccine in the States and indeed everywhere. Uh, healthcare workers look like getting in fairly early. Long-term care facility residents because of their risk of dying if they get the disease. First responders, paramedics, police, etc. Uh, teachers, grocery workers. Now, grocery workers. I just want to stop now and just pay tribute to grocery workers. I mean, they really are some of the unsung heroes of this pandemic throughout the first lockdown throughout the second lockdown people have been working in essential supermarkets and grocery provision otherwise we would have all starved to death and um you know we, we tend to take these people for granted but i think it's just you know if you're a grocery worker uh, at the moment and you work through all of 2020 then then well done that actually has required quite a bit of courage to do that. So um, let, let, let's just remember that. Next time we go shopping, let's just uh, remember to... Um, I mean, we rightly talk about nurses, doctors, paramedics. Of course, of course, of course, of course, 100%. But grocery workers are right up there as well. And um, so just, just maybe a kindly word next time you go shopping. Uh, these people have done us a great national service all around the world um next next in the order 100 million high-risk people due to comorbidity diabetes heart disease long-term medical conditions and then 53 uh, million adults over the age of 65 so they're figures for the united states but they they apply they apply everywhere that sort of priority um now as I've said, problems coming up. Now, I'm going to use the states as an example, but this applies to everywhere. What are the problems coming up for the next, well, for this winter, really? Um, so, and that, that is the first problem, winter. Doors will be shut. Skin will not be exposed to sunshine. Vitamin D will not be made. Um, heating will be put on. Uh, humidity can be, can be lowered by heating people mixing indoors, close contact, winter, just a bit of a, of a nightmare, really. 
So that's the first problem. Now, another problem that's that's come to light really is is the states. And th this is this is not just a problem with the states. It's a problem in many places. But in the states, a lot of decision making has been delegated down to the state, county and municipality region. Um, and we have this in the UK as well, to a degree. But if we, if we can stick with the states, then you could have one municipality which has, say, uh, hairdressers all closed down. Whereas a municipality next door has got hairdressers open. So people can take a two minute drive. Be in a different municipality, municipality, municipality have different um, regulations and get the haircut. Then, then drive back home to their own area where um, um, the, the the regulations might be tighter. Same by county, same by state. Um, you know, it's not for nothing that you get liquor stores on state boundaries uh, because it's cheaper in the next state and people uh, vote with their feet or vote with their wheels. So that's been part of the problem in the States, this, this idea that people can kind of shop around and uh, spread the virus as they go. Uh, much the same, somewhat the same in the UK, uh, somewhat the same in Germany and other countries. It's not, not unique to the States, but it's an interesting uh, question for governance. I heard a guy being interviewed today. I woke up in a free country. Absolutely. Thank, thank everyone for that. Wonderful to have a free country. But that doesn't... This has been taken, uh, you know, we have a saying in English that you turn permission in, into license. So, yes, it's a free country, but that doesn't give you the right to go around infecting people. So this this cult of the individual has been an aspect of American culture, which, which some people may choose to reflect on. We have it somewhat in the UK. Uh, we have it much less in places like China, Taiwan. And of course, the, the, the path of the epidemic in those countries speaks for itself. Um, testing accuracy is another one. Uh, people might not test positive for a few days after infection. Uh, to, to control the population of the United States through testing or the spread of the pandemic, epidemiologists have said people would need to be tested. Everyone tested every two weeks, um, which is probably impossible. But even if it were... Uh, contact tracing in the states is weak and and, and indeed the, the the test and trace and isolate in, in the, the united kingdom has never worked properly so it's not just the states it's not just the uk in other places as well contact tracing is weak 100 people per infection would need to be contacted and this is simply not happening in the uk or the united states in the united states that would require 100,000 full-time contact tracers which have not been recruited and then people would have to comply when they're pinged on their phone or rang up. And compliance isn't always there either. Uh, another problem with the pandemic over winter is lack of therapeutics. I'm quite hopeful about the monoclonal antibody treatments. Uh, and, we, and we know that the steroids are helpful, but we still have no specific antivirals. Let's make no mistake about that. It's not like a bacterial infection where we can treat it. We still have no specific antivirals for this virus. Uh, vaccine immunity delays, immunoglobulin could be several weeks. So after people are vaccinated, and th this the Oxford vaccine we're talking about this recently, it could be up to six weeks before they have a full immune response. So again, we've got this delay that we're going to have to live with over winter. Um, anti-vaccine thinking and ludicrous anti-vaccine propaganda um, social media companies are checking on this now, which is good to see. <clears throat> Official government advice is being given, um, but there's still a lot of anti-vax gobbledygook out there. Um, that is completely inconsistent with the science, inconsistent with national guidelines, inconsistent with international guidelines. Uh, still, still a bit of a problem. And... Uh, no, no one really is saying that vitamin D is important for immunomodulation or very few people in authority saying that. So vitamin D, the vitamin D pandemic, uh, the, the, the vitamin, lack of vitamin D pandemic remains with us largely. Although it is getting better because the vitamin D is always sold out <laughs> when, I, when I want to buy some. Um, now, um, other cultural aspect uh, just briefly, UK Christmas, 
Uh, we're having like a bit of a COVID break, 23rd to the 27th of December. Three households allowed to mix to form a Christmas bubble. Uh, they can mix indoors. They're allowed to stay overnight within three households. It's going to be fixed, so you can't have two households one day and another four households, three households the next day. So only three for the period. Northern Ireland a bit longer, partly because of travel from north to south, from the Republic to uh, Ulster. Um, England existing support bubbles count as one household, so that can mean that um, they could potentially mix with more. No limits to the number of people in households joining a bubble. Big households could therefore be mixing. People self-isolation should not join a bubble, which is okay. We agree with that. Um, so basically, um, you know, all we have to do is have a word with this virus, and I'm sure it'll be reasonable and take Christmas off, same as Thanksgiving. It's just not going to happen, is it? So are we going to get a Christmas surge as a result of these reduced restrictions for Christmas in the UK? Absolutely. It is completely inevitable. This is going to cause more people uh, getting the virus in early January, more people being hospitalised in mid to late January, more people dying in late January, early February. It is quite inevitable. Unfortunately, Christmas is an aspect of culture that we need to suspend just for one year, like Dr Fauci said. You know, call time for this year, good one last year, good one next year, call time this year. It is inevitable. Now, I think the reason the British government have done this is they think people are going to do it anyway. So I don't think the problem is government stupidity here. I think the government, the problem is um, people would just not obey the regulations and the law uh, because they prioritise their own cultural uh, practices. That is the nature of the problem and kind of the theme of this video really uh never never does any harm to remind it of that does it i didn't mean to didn't mean to click it <laughs> but any any people that are positive or symptomatic um within 48 hours then all of the bubbles and the households will have to self-isolate so that's good so um so what one person attends a, a dinner for example uh, test positive or develop symptoms within 48 hours then everyone there will have to self-isolate and let's hope that that is done uh, travel now this is another thing travel restrictions will be lifted uh, family visits anywhere in the uk so again just like we mentioned for the united states this is going to mean guaranteed spread around the country no extra public transport is being laid on which means public transport could be crowded and uh, the ventilation in public transport is nothing like I would like it to be so a problem now uh, Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon Scotland relaxing restrictions will not extend to cover New Year's Eve now this is actually a huge uh, cultural thing uh, first foot for Nuddy is, is, is quite a Scottish tradition um, and uh, it's off this year so um, New Year celebrations are more significant in Scotland than the rest of the other parts of the United Kingdom but uh, the restrictions will not be extended to New Year so the Scottish Government there is actually taking a stand against this aspect of Scottish culture uh, whereas other governments don't seem to be doing so um, now, uh, care home residents not to join bubbles. Okay, that's that's good. That that applies to all countries. France seems to be going similar way. Uh, restrictions remaining in the coming weeks. Continue to stay at home. Telecommunicate where possible. Uh, give up private meetings and family gatherings. No essential travel. Ban all non-essential travel. But uh, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Share these moments together among families. What Emmanuel Macron has said, indicating there'll be a a loosening of restrictions in France over Christmas and again don't know the details of the French situation but that potentially will result in greater spread as we've said Thanksgiving in the United States will cause a surge as we've said Christmas in the UK will cause a surge I really hope I'm wrong but uh, I, th I think you probably agree that I'm not um, you don't have to be too 
clever to work that one out actually. The vi you see, the virus is still very prevalent. There's a lot of it around. It's not gone away. It's there in, in large amounts. And uh, that's the problem. Oh, just a quick, just a quick, just a quickie before we finish. Uh, the, the half dose of the Oxford vaccine. So this is, this is, this is weird. So you give 25 billion viral particles for the first dose. That's a half dose. Then four weeks later, you give 50 by. 50 billion viral particles, that's the full dose. And the immunity is 90%. Whereas if you give the full 50 billion viral particles twice, the immunity goes down to 62%. I mean, wow, what a difference. Why is that? Don't know. No, I don't think anyone knows. It's just, isn't the immune system amazing, fantastic and weird and indeed unpredictable? But it turns out that that half dose was actually a mistake. They didn't mean to do it. So by making a mistake, they've actually increased the efficacy of the, the, uh, the vaccine by 28%. They are uh, clearly uh, experimenting with that now. So I thought that was just an interesting story. It's the adenoviral vector. It's, it's a chimpanzee common cold virus. <coughs> um, now, now this adenovirus vector. So, so what, what this Oxford group have been doing is they've been taking this adenovirus from chimps, farm, harmless, fairly harmless virus that causes cold in chimps, and they've been trying to use it as a flu vaccine, a MERS vaccine, and an Ebola vaccine. And they've had some success with all of these, but none of them have made it through to phase three trials. It's only the uh, SARS coronavirus 2 that's made it through to phase three trials. Um, so the lower dose as well seem to give rise to less side effects, the fatigue, headache, uh, sore arms. So. So you have less side effects and you get greater immunological protection by the looks of it because of the half strength first dose with only 25 billion viral particles. Um, second dose booster shot at the scheduled time. So they carried on. Once they realised they'd made this mistake, they just carried on and they got a 90% immune response. Whereas if they hadn't made the mistake, they'd have only got 62. And a 90% immune response is absolutely... Fantastic. So more adjustment of dose could improve that further. And I would not be surprised if Moderna and Pfizer and the other groups are also currently uh, experimenting with moderating their dose, reducing the dose. Right, that's all I had to say today. Uh, now, are we going to get a picture here? Or oh, is my computer on a ghost? Oh, there we go. Now, this is Dan in Nebraska. And uh, I must say, I've tried Corona beer. And uh, uh, let's just say I was disappointed. So Corona's not my favourite beer, but Dan doesn't seem to be minding. But glad to see that you're watching the videos, Dan, in, uh, in Nebraska. Looks like we're going to agree on many, many things, but perhaps not beer brand preference. So I'm sure Dan doesn't normally drink Corona. OK, that's us for this video. Um, interesting you know, just look around see what things you are your own culture that are really quite strange when you look at them uh, potentially uh, as an outsider which of course is very hard to do okay um have a great thanksgiving safe socially controlled thanksgiving but enjoy it nonetheless <laughs>